Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. And it's been a few weeks since the last time I uploaded a tutorial, but things have been a little bit busy, so I've just been trying to get myself all caught up. Now, the last thing that we went over was the random number guessing game in Java. And with that, we were discussing the use of objects that we started creating out of other classes inside the Java API. So these were things like the scanner class, which we used to take user input, and the random class, which we used to generate a random number. And we also made further use of the while loops and the if-else conditional statements to logically control the flow of our program code. So for this tutorial, I initially had intended to cover the basics of logic, the logical operators, and that started to get into the bitwise functions, and that kind of quickly ballooned into a much larger tutorial covering a lot of different advanced topics. So I thought I would break each of these subtopics down a little bit and go over each of them in their own tutorials. And so for this tutorial, I'm going to be covering the binary system. So in order to understand binary, the first thing that we have to cover is the decimal system, which is what we refer to as base 10. And this is the number system we're used to counting in. And really it kind of started because it's intuitive for us to count in tens. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes, and it just kind of makes sense to us. So with the decimal system or base 10, the way that we count is for each position, we can use that to represent a range of values or digits. So in each position, we have 10 different possibilities, and these are the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, which is a total of 10 different options. So if we're given some string of numbers, we can break that down. Starting from the right, we would say that each position is labeled as, and the first one we would say is the ones column. And as we move left, we then have the tens column, the hundreds column, the thousands column, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, and so on into infinity. Well, starting with the ones column, we would represent each of these based on a scientific notation where we have the base, in this case base 10, raised to some exponent. So on the far right, we have the exponent is 0. 10 to the 0, or any number to the 0, gives us 1. And as we move left, we increase the exponent by 1. So in the tens column, we have 10 to the 1, which gives us 10. In the hundreds column, we have 10 squared, which gives us 100. And then we have 10 cubed, which gives us 1,000. And we just keep repeating this as we move left. So if we were given some number, and in this case we have 23,456,789, the way we can break that down is starting on the right, we would say that we have a 9 in the 1's column. So 9 times 10 to the 0, and that gives us 9. And then we have an 8 in the tens column, so that's 8 times 10 to the 1, or 8 times 10, which gives us 80. We have 7 in the hundreds column, so we have 7 times 10 squared, which gives us 700. Then we have a 6 in the thousands column, that's 6 times 10 cubed, which gives us 6,000. And we just repeat this for each of these digits as we're going across based on their position. And once we finish, we take all of the results of those and add them up. And we get a sum here of 23,456,789. Now, in the same way, we can apply this kind of logic to the binary system. And the binary system we refer to as base 2 because we have a range of two possible values, either 0 or 1. Or the way it really comes out is positive or negative, so on or off. Now, each position we refer to as a bit which stands for a binary digit. And more often than not, we're going to group 8 bits into what we refer to as a byte. So here I just listed some of the some examples of where you might run into each of these. So for a single byte or 8 bits, we can use that to represent the ASCII code character set. For 16 bits or 2 bytes, we can represent all of the sockets or port numbers for socket programming. And we use 16 bits in the Unicode UTF-8, uh, I'm sorry, UTF-16, 
encoding, which is how Java actually encodes all of the characters of the type char in the Java language. Then we have three bytes or 24 bits. And a lot of times you'll see this used in um, graphic arts. So each byte might represent uh, one of the three major color spectrums. So we would have one byte for red, one byte for green, and one byte for blue. And by altering the value for each one of these bytes, we can change between 16,777,216 different colors. If we move up to four bytes or 32 bits, we use that for IP addressing for the IPv4 protocol. When we move up to 48 bits, that gets used for MAC addresses. And then finally, the new emerging internet protocol version 6 uses 64 bits. So if we move back down to uh, a single byte, which is 8 bits, we might imagine it represented like this. And in this case, we have all of the bits in the on position, or set to 1. So applying the same thing that we had done here, since we're using base 2, we're going to, again, start with the rightmost position, with the exponent being 0. Again, any number raised to the 0 power gives us 1. And as we increase over, we have 2 to the 1 gives us 2. 2 squared gives us 4. 2 to the 3rd gives us 8. 2 to the 4th, 16. And finally, for 1 byte, we have 2 to the 7th gives us 128. Now again, if you look at these outcomes, you notice that each of these doubles. So we have this rule of doubling. And if we were to ask what is 2 to the 8th, we could quickly say, well, what's double 128? And that would be 256. So one question somebody might ask is, what is the maximum decimal value you can store using 8 bits? Well, we would take the number of bits that we have out of this and set it equal to n. So in this case, 8 bits is our n. And we use this formula here, 2 to the n minus 1. So 2 to the 8th is 256. Minus 1 gives us 255. That is the maximum value that we can represent using 8 bits. And just to check this, you can add up all of these different values here. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And that will add up to 255. Well, of course, if you include 0, where all of these are turned off, you have 256 different possible combinations of values that we can represent using just 8 bits. So, of course, if we increase this to 2 bytes, 3 bytes, and 4 bytes, you can increase the number of values that you can represent. And that's what these values here pertain to. So with 8 bits, as we said, 0 through 255, if we step up to 2 bytes, we can represent 0 through 65,535, 24 bits up to 16.7 million, 32 bits, 4.2 billion, and that number just keeps increasing as you add more bits to it. So now again, the first thing to notice here is that we are only in the positive range of numbers. If we want to incorporate negative numbers into this, we have to use a different system. And we'll get into that in another tutorial, which is going to cover what's called the twos complement system. But if you're only concerned with positive numbers, and we'll just stick to that for right now, well again, and as we were just saying, let's say we have 16 bits. Um, we just keep moving the exponents over here and this increases the total values that we can represent. So one quick example, let's say we had this bit pattern here, 1001-1101. The way we can determine what this represents in the decimal system is by calculating each position out. So starting on the right, we have a 1 in the 2 to the 0 column, so that's just 1. 0 times 2 to the 1. Well, 0 times anything is 0. 1 in the 2 squared column, so that's 1 times 4. 1 in the 2 to the 3rd column, so we have an 8. 1 in the 2 to the 4th column, so that's a 16. 
then we have two more zeros. And finally, a 1 and a 2 to the 7th column, so we have a 128. By adding all of these up, we get a sum of 157, which is the decimal value representation. So if you wanted to take any number in decimal, you can simply look back and say, what combination of these do I need to represent it? Well, obviously, for 8 bits, you have to be within the 0 to 255 range. But you would simply say, for example, if I needed 36, well, 32 is too small and 64 is too large. So I know that I can take 32 and add some combination of, of these to get that value. And in this case, we would take a 1 in this column. And then we just need 4 more, so we can put 1 in the 2 squared column, and that gives us 36. So in the next tutorial, we're going to cover, as I had said, the use of positive and negative numbers. And to do that, we're going to be covering what's known as the 2's complement system.